Alrighty guys, I'm the devil and welcome back to Sky Factory. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to address. First is the reason for no video yesterday. Yesterday I was extremely busy, but I did manage to record a video. I did manage to record an episode of Hypervolemia, but I had issues rendering that video out and then I had issues uploading the video. So it didn't get uploaded in the Hypervolemia video today. If it goes up, I'm going to try re-rendering it out. It does say that there's going to be no Sky Factory today, but that was supposed to be yesterday's video, not today's video. But I'm going to use it for today's video since it didn't go up yesterday. And if I can, I'm going to try and get you two Hypervolemias out today. But I don't know. It depends. I'm planning to bulk record Sky Factory at the moment. So we've got one of those episodes every day. So, yeah. I guess we should get into it, guys. So, in today's episode, guys, the first thing that I want to do... Because we've got all these loot bags. I went ahead and I grabbed everything up from my mob grinder and brought it over here. We've got a lot of loot bags and we can open them quite easily. But I want to automate that. Because in a future episode, guys, we are going to be working on a proper mob grinder. And we're going to be getting these by the ton. And I kind of want to automate the opening of them. And I'm guessing that there are multiple different ways that you could do this. But the way that I know is to use a chest. So we've got a chest. We can just use just an ordinary chest for now. And I'm going to pop this chest just there. And the next thing that I'm going to need is an autonomous activator. Which also means that I'm going to actually... I'm going to move this chest. I think. Um, one, two... Yeah, I'm going to move this chest to here. And I need some energy. And I knew I only had three left because I've set up a little something off camera. So I'm going to need that there. And the next thing we're going to need is a little tool called an auton or ton there we go what up for spotted by autonomous activator and we have just the chests so we need a piston done oh this AE system makes it so much easier oh this is tin I always thought this was invar that's why I always put off doing it till later on in the game I don't have no gold So a couple of things I want to get into in this episode. The first thing is I want to automate loot bags. The second thing is I want to set up some test racks, which means we're going to be playing with some new machines. Now I want to show you guys some off-cam work that I've done. I've set this up. I've moved our um, sifting or auto sieving unit up here and over here. I've decided to abandon this this um, devil's lair because building out of obsidian is just too much hard work for me. It takes too long, and when you misplace block, you got to mine that block. It takes way too long. So I'm sorry, we're going to rebuild back up there, but I'm moving everything down here so we can tear that down. And the first build we're going to do is going to be the mob grinder. But that's going to be in a future episode, guys. But yeah, these are already, these are already filled up. Oh, actually, no, these are all out of power. Of course, of course, the power. Forgot about that. Because if we just nip down here, guys, you can see that I have set up some dynamos. Some beautiful dynamos here, but they're not active. Why are they not active? That's because, for once... I use the redstone switch thing that allows that to be activated with a switch. This here is now activated with the switch, which means this lovely thing is draining out. I just wanted to do that so I could turn this off and on as well. At will. And we've got that. And I don't think that's actually making any power yet because it's filling up everything up there. But this is our lava generation. We've got some beautiful pyrethemium here. This is as much pyrethemium as I could make. And then we got some you know, handy dandy lava. So some of these are at two, some of these are at seven. Doesn't really matter. I gotta be careful there's actually a exposed spot there. Got our good old cobblestone generator here. And we got our yeah. So this is where our lava is now being produced from. If we run down here, you can see that we've got this here that collects the lava and then distributes it to the dynamos. And this is very early game power still. There's a lot of the ways that we can get power. See, even with all of that running, we are still making 340 RF per tick, which is really, really kind of cool. So yeah, that's what I've kind of done off cam. Yeah, let me up. Okay, screw it, we're going this way. I did have a death off cam though. I've had actually two deaths in Sky Factory, I think. Um, one was coming back up here, my jetpack ran out of fuel. That is such a noobish mistake, but I made that mistake. And the first death that I had on this game was um, I decided to come down here and, and build um, a pillar going down while on my jetpack. But I'd forgotten again that I had stuck my jetpack in one of these and I jumped clean off the end without it. 
So thankfully that one where I just ran left my jetpack behind was easier to go down and get because it puts all your stuff in a gravestone. But the one where I actually... I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see them there. Side by side. Pretty much where I died. I don't think I've had three deaths. Let's see. We'll know because if there is another... Yeah, it's just those two. Yep, just two deaths. So yeah, let's go get some gold. Because that is what we're going to need. So... I'll take you actually through the way this system works. This is the exact same system that we had back there, back up there. Just sifting um, cobble to gravel to sand to dust and sieving it and outputting it into. Oh, excuse me, guys. Got a little bit of the caps Into a chest. This again is doing the same system as that one just is. It's just got one less pulverizer on it, so we're not turning. Um, we're turning gravel to sand, but we're not turning the sand to anything. We are simply just sieving the sand immediately. And that is producing these for us. Any gold there? Yes, we've got some gold. And I think this is gold. Yeah. And this one is just doing gravel. And sieving gravel. The reason that I've done this is so we get the, the stuff that's unique to gravel, the stuff that's unique to sand, and the stuff that's unique to dust. There are some universal stuff. I mean, clearly everything is unique because this produces different kinds. This produces tin ore, broken tin ore. This produces crushed ore, and this produces powdered ore. But this produces tin, tin, tin. You get what I mean. Very simple. So, that's one of the things that we've done. I really would like to, to get that. Let's see. Let's let this one do. Nah. It's not going to produce the gold, is it? Anyway, we have enough gold for what we want, I believe. So I'm gonna just whiz this up. We get, we'll get four pieces of gold from this, and we'll just stick that in there. So one of the things that I want to get into this episode, guys, like I said, is test racks. I want to be able to send all of that stuff from there wirelessly to here, and and our hard drives are filling up. And I don't know if we can. Um, oops. What were we missing to make some more? Because I know that we've got two more of those. Let's see. One, two. That's cool. There we go. We must have just been missing iron or something. I remember we were low on iron. There we go. So let's just have a quick look. See. Aha! We have some broken gold ore. There we go. Now, there is a way to automate this so that um, basically I just have this auto craft pack. And then have it export into a pulverizer, and then the pulverizer into a smeltery or something. But I'm not going to do that. Too much work for just this basic base to keep this basic base running. We'll do that in the final build. And guys, I'll be putting a um, download in the description for the final build for the world at the end of the series. Um, I think I'll do a, one of those also every 50 episodes if we get to 50. So keep a lookout for that. So yeah. So now. Now we need that. Oh, did I actually make the autonomous activator? I don't actually think that I did. I will spell autonomous right one day. I think I forgot to make this coil. And boom. And I'm going to just stick this there. And let me get my wrench. I'm actually using a wrench for a change. Or a crescent hammer. And what I want to do is pop that there. So that's going to... I want that to actually right click and I want that to sneak. Like so. And basically what that's gonna do is just come keep on. Yeah, I should be sneaking and right clicking. So that's gonna keep on right clicking this and putting stuff into it. So how does that help the loot bags? Well if we take a loot bag, for example, we'll take this one. And we stick that loot bag in here. It acts like a player. And it right clicks and puts what's in the loot bag within here. So. What we need is some more cables. And we only have the one. And I'm going to need more than the one. So let's just quickly. Do I have the stuff to grab it? Yes, that should be plenty enough. I'm just going to go ahead and trail them over there. Now what this does is this keeps this connected to the ME system. And basically, the first thing that I want to do is I want to start importing from this chest. So you need to import to the um, ME system. To do that, you need an import an import bus. And I'm actually surprised that we have slime, but that's okay. 
I need... Let's just grab a couple of pistons. Boom. And I think that I have everything there. And all we do is we take this and we slap that on top. And that is going to take anything that is within this chest and import it from this chest to our ME system. So let's just say that, um, let's take something that we only have. Let's take some powder platinum ore. Just for the sake of it, throw that in there. And that's clearly now in this chest. Oh no, it's not. It's gone. Where's it gone? If we go to here, well, we can see that we have the powder platinum ore back in our ME system all automatically. Very, very simple. So, we've got this set up, but now we need to get the loot bags into here. So we could set a chest up and just manually put the loot bags in, or we could use an export bus. And this is the export bus, and basically, this does the exact same thing that, that does, just in the opposite direction. So we stick that there, and that's going to take out of our ME system and put in here. Now, as you can see, it's only got one slot unlocked. It's actually quite difficult to see, but this middle slot is the only one that's highlighted, but there are nine slots. We'll get into that in a little bit, but the first thing that I want to do, guys, I want to go to loot bags. I want to grab a loot bag, and I want to tell it that I want loot bags to be exported to there. So this should, in theory, fill up with loot bags. And those loot bags will be right clicked into here. But as you can see, this chest, this chest is kind of filling up faster than we are emptying it. So we gotta do something about that, because we can't have that. That's gonna fill up way faster than we can empty it. And you do that by using these cards. Not these ones, these ones. And we're looking particularly for, let me just move my mic a little bit closer, I feel like it's too far away. Maybe not that close. So if we use an acceleration card, it will accelerate the rate in which it takes stuff out of the chest and puts it into the ME system. But to do that, guys, we need a couple of things. And those are two diamonds. We don't have two diamonds. And I don't think that we would be as lucky. We are lucky for one diamond. And... Oops. Nope. And I don't think the powder actually does diamonds. Nope. So we got one diamond. One diamond out of all of that. But... So at the end of the world, if we go to the cards, we can at least work on this and hopefully get another diamond in the process. So we just stick that in there. Boom. Oops. Yeah, of course it goes into the chest automatically. So. There are two cards that we need. The first one that we need one is an acceleration card, and the other one is the capacity card. And the reason we want the capacity card, we actually want... Wait, this is not one. This is what we want. Let's go ahead and just grab up another one of these. Because oops, no. Because we are gonna need two. Come on, thank you. And I realize that I just taken away from the um, the next one that we are gonna be making. Actually no. It requires one. And capacity card. Where's my capacity card? Am I blind? I spelled capacity wrong. No. Okay, so we're going to need two of these basic cards. And we can then turn those basic cards into capacity cards. And what this does is when we put these in, is it opens all slots. Just opens them all. Yeah. So now we can easily export to this system, which is going to continuously right-click for us into this chest, which is annoying because it keeps opening in it and closing it and opening it and then closing it again. So yeah, that's going to export into there. Now guys, while we wait for some diamonds, there are some other things that I do want to get into. And the first thing that I want to get into guys is a Tesseract. Now, this is going to require a diamond in itself and we need three of these. So I may have to AFK to get some diamonds at some point but the big one is this endinium ingot which is pyrothelium endinium base and an ender pearl so we need endinium base which is a platinum ingot a silver ingot and two tin ingots so if we go in here and we get a silver ingot we'll take 
Let's take eight of those. And we'll take eight shiny ingots as well. And then we'll take 16 tin ingots. 10, 10, 10. Oh no. For some reason, my keyboard stops working with the um, tiki randomly. I thought that was it, but it's not it. Okay. Stick those in there. Now, now we need pyrothemium. Which we do have a little bit of. 10 pieces off. Um, but let's just have a quick look at the tesseract. See what I mean? No T. I don't know why it does it. It just randomly will stop for no apparent reason. Uh, it's not the keyboard, it's the game. So, to do this, we need Endidium Base. And to get two of that, and I want three, three test racks, that's four, eight, that's 12. Which means I need 12 Endidium Base, 12 Ender Pearls, and six Pyrothemium. Ender Pearls, we've only got 11 Ender Pearls, that's um, quite bad. Hmm. Let's just take six for now. I would like to definitely keep some. Let's just quickly turn the keyboard off. If I turn the keyboard off, turn it back on, it seems to re-register the T key. But the thing is, it doesn't do this on any other mod pack. It doesn't do this issue on Word, on, on anything other than Sky Factory. And it's only this version of Sky Factory that does it on. And I'm not sure why. If you guys know why, please let me know in the comment section down below. So yeah. This should have... Oh, wow, that actually created more Indian Basin than I thought. Okay, let's stick those in there. And let's let those get to work. Because we're going to need a Mag Macrucible to help with this. And as you can see, this thing isn't that easy to make. And we have none of that. Not a single piece. So let's go and make the easy stuff first. Let's make... The, um, the redstone perception coil. Let's go ahead and make the invar gears. I made up some invar off cam, quite a bit of invar, so we always had some. Nether brick, and I think I'm going to need some nether rack to be fair. So, nether rack. Yes, we have nether rack. Um, I don't think I'm going to need that much, so let's just put half of that away. And we don't have a spare furnace. Do I actually have one in here that I can just nap? No. See, Tiki works for it fine now. So, yeah, guys, let me get this um, stuff cooked up for you. Let's actually, before we go, we might be able to actually do something. Let's see if there's another diamond in here. No, there isn't. So, yeah, guys, let me get this stuff cooked up, and I'll come right back to you. Okay, guys, we are back, and I went ahead and I got an extra diamond. So, what we can do now is actually make this card. Put that in there, take the acceleration card, and I don't have one of those. Let's see. Let's just make a um, couple of those. Just a couple, because that's all we have the room for. Two acceleration cards, I'm happy with those. And, oops, nope, that's not actually what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Just need the one, and now let's get on to the loot bags. We've got that one to import. We've got that one. There are nine different kinds of loot bags the last time I did this. So I'm hoping that it remains the same this time around. There may be more. There may not be more. You can see there, there are those. But I'm sure that if we type in bag. Oh, did he take out the other bags? He must have took out the other bags. There were some unique bags, but not anymore. So I'm hoping, guys, for some Ender Pearls. And we got one from all of that, so I'm quite happy. I made up some Enderium ingots. Um, but now I want to get onto the fluid, oh, fluid transposer, the Magma Crucible. This is what we was working on the last time. I got the Nether Brick. So we just need two of those. Boom. And we need a machine frame, which means I'm going to need a few tin gears. I'm just going to make up a few tin gears because we'll come, we'll need those at some point in the future, making all of these machines. So. That's machine frame. So now all we're missing is this. And I don't think that I actually have a block of redstone. So let's just quickly make that. Boom. I'm actually glad that we have a lot of the stuff that we need. There's the magma crucible. And that is going to go. Yeah. 
and I want to quickly deconfigure all sides and I want to output the fluid down. Now, guys, if you're wondering just how you do that to deactivate all the sides like so, all you do is you hold shift and you click the center. It's that simple. I saw a few YouTubers do it and I had no idea how to do it myself and I accidentally figured it out by pressing every button I could think of and that's how I do it. So I thought I'd just tell you guys if you don't know how to do that. So that what this does is so it heats stuff up and turn it into a fluid for us. And the particular one that we want is we take an ender lily seed, because these things are OP for this, unless he's nerfed that. We put that in there, that's going to turn that into endarium. Not endarium, um, resonant ender. And we can use that for a multitude of different things. But the one thing that I want to do it is I want to create the fluid transposer, which is this machine, and boom, we don't, don't have all that much of it. Let's make the machine frame. Cool. And what do we need? We need copper gears, which is bad time to have used a lot of my copper. And we need a redstone reception coil. And boom. And what this does, if we take that, this takes a fluid. This takes a fluid from out of here and puts it into whatever we want. And we're going to need that for the Tesseract. So... The next thing that I want to do, guys, is start to build a Tesseract. So, we're going to be missing the diamond, I believe. Yes. Let's hope. Let's cross our fingers and hope we have a diamond. We have three. So, what I went ahead and done, that, guys, to help increase the diamond rate, was I put in 10 fortune upgrades and 10 speed upgrades. And what that's doing is that's just increasing the speed. And, as you can see from that one, we got three. It increases the chance that multiple will drop. So we could increase that further, but they take a hell of a lot of power to do. And I don't think we'll get past that. I don't think we'll have enough power. So, three lovely jubbly test racks. And what I'm going to do with these test racks, if I stick the test rack in here, we need to fill it. We need to fill the test racks with resident ender. And yeah, there are a multitude of different ways to do this, I believe. This is the way that I know. This is the way that I love. And this is the way that I want it. So guys, what I'm going to do is we're going to set up a little bit more. The next thing I want is an item conduit. The reason I want this is very, very simple. Is I want to go with this torch here. Is I want to do that. I do not want to export. I want to import from there. Insert. Why did I put you there? And I'm going to put the test right there because the test right cannot directly insert into an ME system. Or at least it couldn't the last time I played around with it. So whether they've changed that in the updates, because there has been a huge update to a lot of mods, I don't know. But I'm not going to take the risk, and I really don't have the materials to create another import bus. So we'll just import to this chest from the test rack, which will go there. we got two test racks done, so we can actually use these two. So we put these in here. These aren't complete yet. We still need to do the final bit, which is to surround it with silver and bronze. Now, bronze is made from copper and tin, but I already have some bronze ingots. But yeah, if, we, if you just take copper, like so, and some tin, the, the, the key stopped working just randomly. It does drive me up the wall. I think I'm going to restart the PC. See, it works there. So, yeah, it's working again. Okay. So we just grab a little bit of tin, and we throw that. I think it's a ratio of four copper to one tin. No, three copper to one tin. Makes bronze. And as you can see, guys, I made up quite a little bit of it. Just so we always add some, because it's always the one that I'm running out of. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this test rack here. I'm going to stick it there. And it looks very plain, it looks very boring until we right click it. And we go to configure. And what I want it to do is I want it to receive items only. So it's going to be receiving items from number one. Um, Absid. Ian. No, it's not called Obsidian Palace. Um, temp or 
So we know this is temp or so I'm going to add that and I'm going to set the frequency. So that's going to receive any items that we send from that same frequency. And as you can see, it has changed and it looks rather lovely now. And I actually want that to export without a signal. So if we go in here, I just want to make sure that I've got these item conduits on us. And what I want to do, guys, is I want to... I want to go ahead and I want to grab this stuff out of here. And I want to mine up this chest. With the right tool, eventually. And I'm going to stick down my Tesseract. And what I'm going to do this on, I'm going to do this to sending items only and doing nothing else. And if I click this, it is now going to send my items. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to just do that. And I want to tell it now that I want it to export from here. Oops, extract with a signal. And extract with a signal. That is signal. Now I should start pulling the stuff out of these chests. And putting them back in to our lovely ME system. So if we go over here, we should actually see this in work. Very briefly. Yes, you can see that the stuff is getting put into this chest. And then from this chest, it is getting put into our ME system. Which does mean that this is going to fill up rather fast. We may add, add no, we may have to add a more increased storage. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue. That is all working, guys. And I am very, very happy with what we've managed to do this episode. And I just wonder, if I type in bag, no. No more bags. So yeah, I think that that's enough for this episode, guys. I'm very happy and content with what we've managed to do in this episode. And in the next episode, guys, what I want to do is I want to set up an automated tree farm. Yeah. Actually, I think that we got time for that. Let's have a little look see here. Um, planter. No, because I'm going to need some more Tesseracts for the power and the items and stuff to send them from over there to over here. So yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. Click the subscribe button if you want to see me. I know this is a bit of a short episode, guys, but I showcased everything that I wanted to showcase quite quickly, actually. Um... And I really do want to get into the mob grinder build at some point. And for that we need... What I want to do for the mob grinder build is I want to use Cursed Earth. And this stuff doesn't appear naturally. And there's no way to make it in a crafting table. You have to do a ritual. Which reminds me, do we actually have the stuff for the... We actually have the division sigil, which is good. And we actually have three diamonds, which is even better. And... I want to see if we can. Can we make a enchanted table? No, because we are missing a book. There we go. And now we have that done. So what I'll do, guys, off cam is um, start work on the mob grinder, I suppose. And yeah. So guys, yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider leaving it a like and click that subscribe button, guys, if you want to see more from me. I'm the devil. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate every single like, every single comment, every single view. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. I cannot say it enough, including Mark, who is pretty much right now the guy who is on all my videos. He leaves comments. He's, he's there. He's very, very supportive, and I really, really do appreciate it. So I want to take time to say thank you very much to you, man. It really means a lot to me. It really is. You have no idea how much it means to me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye! And we'll grow in numbers